Hi, Stampers. Happy Monday. Welcome to today's live. Um, thank you for being here. I appreciate all of your support. Uh, my name is Lisa. I'm with Queen Bee Creations. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I go live right here on YouTube and Facebook every Monday and Thursday at 2.30 to do something fun and exciting with paper crafting. And today we're working on a stocking stuffer idea. This is a Hershey bar holder, and this slides off, and then there's a Hershey bar on the inside. And these make great gifts for people who you want to give just a little something to, but you don't want to invest a lot. Um, and it comes with this little belly band. Um, this weekend was on stage. I was not able to go. I do a three-day craft fair here in Twin Falls, Idaho every um, November, and this was the weekend they were doing it. And so since I had taken time off to go to Backstage, which is our leadership conference, um, I didn't get a chance to go to Onstage. And there actually wasn't anything local. Um, I would have either had to go to Anaheim, which is Southern California, or up to Canada, which I thought was a little weird since Stampin' Up! headquarters is in Salt Lake City, which is three hours from me, <laughs> but nothing was close. Uh, but that's okay. I stayed home. I met lots of new stamping friends and um, made a little money. And I did that by selling little goodies like this. So today I'm here to show you how to make that little chocolate bar holder. Let me move you down to my desk. Hopefully things go smoothly. I do have a new mount for my phone that's supposed to be a little more flexible. We'll see. Um, we're going to be using the peaceful deer bundle so it comes with a peaceful deer stamp set and then the deer builder punch punches are always great for mass producing because they are so quick and easy we're also going to be using the label me lovely punch on the front now this bundle is actually something that's in our annual catalog i know when we think about holiday sets, we immediately reach out for our holiday catalog because obviously that's where a lot of them are going to be. But I wanted to point out that this Peaceful Deer is something we had in the holiday catalog in the past and it carried over and can be found on page 42 of the annual catalog. Sometimes they take things that are favorites and they carry them over and they're available all year long. So this week, this is the stamp set we're working with. If you already have it in your collection, fabulous. If you don't, this can be purchased in my online store. We're going to be using garden green cardstock because that's the coordinating color that goes with the DSP that I picked out. And I should have written down what DSP that was, right? That would have been smart. Let's see. It's going to be this one right here, Painted Christmas, which is, again, something that was a carryover. Page 29. So it's this DSP I'm using right here. I use these pine cones um, for the first one, and I'm using this one here for the second one. So you're going to need a piece of cardstock that is seven and a half by eight. And then you're going to bring in a scoring tool, either your simply scored or a trimmer. I prefer to use the Simply Score just because I find it to be more accurate for me. Um, we're going to come in and we're going to score at along the, I've got the eight inches across the top, right? I'm going to score at three eighths of an inch and then three quarter. And then I'm going to come over here and do the same thing from this side. We're going to do seven and a quarter and seven and five eighths. And so that's gonna give us this three eighths of an inch gap. So if you prefer, you can go this way and score at three eighths and three quarter. And then I'm gonna rotate it and on the seven and a half going across the top, we're gonna to score at one and five eighths 
two inches. No, that's not right. Yeah, one and five eighths and two inches. Sorry, I did one and three eighths. So one and five eighths and then two inches. Four and a half and then four and seven eighths. And so this is again giving me an, another little gullet here that is going to be three eighths of an inch. And that's basically the thickness of our candy bar. And so that's going to be the thickness of our box all the way around. So I don't need this one. Okay. So I'm going to now burnish on all of my score lines. <laughs> Michigan's 35 degrees too, huh? It's freezing here. It's been like 13 degrees below normal. It's so cold. We're getting into the teens at night and like mid 30s during the day. It's cold for Idaho. Okay, so now I need paper snips. And we're going to trim off these two sides. And so I'm going to trim down all the way to that score line right there. Okay, so I'm leaving this little one. That's going to be a tab. So I'm going to trim it off like that and then wedge this a little. So that's going to be the tab for the bottom of the box. And it's not really used for anything other than some stability. And by removing the little score line there, it just takes away some bulk. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. Yep. Right, I meant to take both of those away. So I'm just kind of cleaning up some little edges. And then again, I stated this one needs to be wedged a little. Okay. And clean up my mess here. And this is what we're left with. Okay, so we're gonna have this top flap, and then we're gonna have this bottom part. This will fold up, and it's gonna go in like that, okay? So that's what we're starting out with. Then I'm gonna go ahead and decorate now because it's easier for me to put the DSP on while it's in this stage. And you don't have to, but I just find it easier. And then, let's see, I'm just gonna try to show you how this was cut. Oh, 
it was all one piece. <laughs> there we go. There's that one. And then there's this, this side. Okay, yes. Okay, so this was six and a quarter by six inches is what this initially started out as. And then I'm going to cut it into these little strips that are, so this is all six and a quarter, right? And out of my six inches this way, it's two and a quarter, two and a quarter, one and three eighths. <laughs> yeah, see, I make lots of boo-boos. They end up being helpful. Thank you. So then we're just going to glue them down and I'm just keeping them in line with the pattern. You don't have to. I'm just kind of weird that way. And I'm using liquid glue so I have my wiggle room, which isn't too bad this time. Almost looks like this is too big. Maybe I made another boo-boo. Who knows? Well, it's two and a half. Okay. All right, then when it's gonna all fold together, this is gonna be the area where we're gonna grab for the candy bar. And so I want a little notch out of here. And we can choose to do that using dies or if you happen to have one of our punches, um, that's what I use. <clears throat> um, so this is a retired punch, but a circle die will work here just as well or really any kind of punch, because I suppose you could even do a notch that looked a little fancy and go this way. And see, it would still be a notch. See, I thought that was a little tall. So what this should do is it should line up direct with that score line here. There we go. Okay. So these little tabs are going to glue up in here. So I think I showed you this before that I kind of bend this the wrong direction so that I have more room for my fingers to fit in here. And I'm going to add a little bit of glue on these little tabs. And then I'm adhering them in here. So I'm watching the corner and making sure that I'm square. And that's why this bending out of the way is helpful in giving you more room to see what you're doing. And you just hold it for a little bit. It does have wiggle time, but then it will finally grab. And then you will be good and stuck. Then we're going to do these ones here. And glue those down. And you could use tear and tape here as well. Just you want a strong adhesive since it is going to get a lot of movement.
it is pretty quick. It took me a while to figure out my measurements because um, I looked online and I printed them out and I think Hershey bars have shrunk. I really do because I tried to find um, measurements and I did find some online and they didn't fit. It was way too big. So I think the Hershey bar I bought this week is much smaller than the one that the gal used a year ago when she made her video. So I had to basically, as I was telling you before, lay it down and then work my way out to get these measurements. But that's how it slides in. And so we could either use Velcro dots here to hold it closed or our mini magnets, or um, we're gonna make a belly band. So I'm gonna make a belly band for this one. Um, there will be a tutorial for sale in my tutorial shop. These are my online free instructions, but if you want written instructions with the template and like the whole thing, I'll have a set of six tutorials for $10 for sale on my um, store. Unless you're a customer, then I mail it to you for free. <laughs> so. From here, what I want to do is create my little belly band and the little reindeer that's going to go on it. So I took and I'm going to stamp him and then um, adhere him over the top. I could use masking, but I decided this time I'm stamping it separate, punching it out, and then putting it on there. Now I used liquid glue and it kind of, I don't know, made a mess. Then I could use my adhesive remover and erase that off of there. But a better idea is our adhesive sheets. Now, it's a little hard to see because it's white on white. But adhesive sheets are something that we sell in our catalog. And they do get looked over because they're kind of hidden back there. But back here by the die cutting machine on page 157 is um, the adhesive sheets. And basically you just take whatever size you need. So here's a little leftover piece. And say I was going to be punching out some little hearts or something. I would find the break in the back because there's little breaks. There's one right here and one right here. So it's basically every two inches. So they're about six by 12, but you would cut off whatever size that you need. And then you peel off that backing and put it down onto your cardstock. And then when you punch through the cardstock or die cut through it, you're gonna have your shape, but then you would be able to peel this off the back and it's gonna be sticky. So it's kind of like a make your own sticker. <laughs> so I'm going to do that on here. So making note that this is the side that has my adhesive sheet. So that's going to be sticky when I peel that off. So I'm going to make sure to stamp on the other side. I'm going to use soft suede. And this works as well as our Memento Black because it's um, water-based. It will work well when I color with the Stampin' Blends because basically if you're going to be using alcohol to color, you want a water-based ink. If you're going to be using water to color, then you want alcohol-based ink. You're using the opposite. So usually with the blends, it's Memento or one of our standard colors, if you're going to be watercoloring or using the blender pens, you want stays on. So I'm going to color the deer, hopefully quick and easy, without going outside the lines. If you do happen to go outside the lines, you can push it back in using the color lifter. You would basically start from out here and push um, with the color lifter to push the ink back into the lines. I 
and I'm coloring with the dark first and then I'm going to come in with the light. Making sure to go over the top of some of my dark to help it blend. So now that it's all colored, we can go ahead and punch it out. Oh, okay. Now, see, now when you look at this, I should have punched them down at the bottom because this is going to not fit right. So I get to show you another trick. I'm going to cut this off so that it will fit in there, but you'll notice I can't like get my fingers to maneuver it around. So one of the things you could do is you could use your take your pick tool with the putty end and you can use the putty end to maneuver it around and it does work quite well. See that got him all lined up. I could go ahead and punch from there or we would take a post-it note and use it as a handle. So I would just put the sticky on here and then I can slide this in and I've got full control of it now by using the post-it note to move it around. So if you have post-it notes handy, go ahead and use those or you can use your take your pick tool. Either one will help you maneuver it so that it punches out. And we just remove that extra post-it note. But then that's all ready to go and it's still got my sticky on the back. So we're gonna be doing that in a minute. There we go. Let me get a strip of my Hard stock. And so I'm going to score this at kind of the same that I did for the box. So in order to wrap it around, I'm going to put a 3 8 inch gap. So I'm making a mark at two inches and then I'm going to give it that three eighths inch and score again. I'm going to move this over to the two and a half. Score and then three eighths of an inch again. And a two inch overlap. So I'm basically just giving it the same um, score lines that I did for this. So it's going to wrap around and be able to slide on and off. And because I did this at one inch, I'm going to cut a three quarters of an inch of my designer series paper. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere it at one end. I'm going to wrap it around and it's basically going to touch on the other side. 
but I don't want to glue all of it down because my fold lines are going to take up a little room. So I want to make sure that I've got that kind of finger pressed all the way around before I glue it down. Okay, does that make sense? Because if I tried to glue it down flat, it's not going to allow for that little bit of extra gap that it needs in order to do the bend. Your power went out. That's a bummer. Glad you were able to join us, though. Don't forget to type in hashtag prize patrol. That's how you get your chance to win the project I'm working on today. Okay, so now that I have this ready to all wrap around, I just need to adhere it on the back side. So I'm going to just put a little adhesive here. and it will slide on and off. Now I can choose to put my element on the front or I can choose to put it in the back. Sometimes I will actually put it on the back because I like that the element we're gonna make will cover up that seam because you won't see it. But we're gonna do a Label Me Lovely punch of green. And then I'm going to do white, and we can do one or two, and I will show you why. So we're going to do our stamping on a white one. And let me bring in my scrap because I'm going to stamp over. I'm going to bring in garden green because that's what we're working with. Now, when I put this down, I want them to kind of go this direction. So that means I want the tops of my trees down here and I want my tops of my trees up here. So just eyeballing that to know where I want them. So that they can best be seen. Now, if I wanted to, we could come in with a blender or something and, you know, sponge a little blue in there as the sky. Um, we don't have to. And then I'm going to lay these on here, giving a little bit of a gap. Now, you can see it doesn't reach all the way because of the same size. So I'm going to take a long blade scissors and I'm going to cut this direction. And then I'm going to cut this direction because we can do this two ways. We can, or three ways, actually. We can choose to give the border on the sides. See, if I lay that down and glue that like that, it's going to give me the green on either side. If I was to do the other ones, it would do the green on top and bottom. And then that gap is gonna be in the back. And again, that's gonna be hidden by the, the belly band, so it won't be noticeable. Okay. So that's what it would look like, you know, top and bottom, or you can do all four and you can make your green go all the way around. Okay, so does that make sense? And if you um, wanted to go all the way around, you can angle this a little just to trim it down, but um, it's not really necessary. One. one.
Okay. Um, And again, this might be smart to do with liquid glue so you have that wiggle time. And see how once it was to go on there, it would hide the seam. Okay, so you would put your candy bar inside with the little notch. And then we would slide this over the top. There we go. And then for my deer to be a sticker, I'm going to peel off that backing of the adhesive sheet. If you guys don't have one of these take your pick tools, oh my gosh, you need one. They are so useful for so many different things. And there we go. There is the label to the front of our stocking stuffer Hershey bar holder. Here's the other belly band. So again, all done with the same designer series paper. It's um, got the little notches in it. Um, this has got a corner rounder. This one doesn't. What do you think? Is this something you're going to give a try? Who decorates up their um, stocking stuffers and puts little boxes and wrappers on them and makes them cute? Is that something you do? I didn't before I did Stampin' Up, but since I have, people are so thrilled with it. And it's also a great thing to give to the hairdresser, the postman, the, you know, all those little people that you'd like to give a little something to, but you don't um, want to spend a lot of money. You can make something special, make them feel special, and have fun with it while you're at it. So everybody's got hashtag prize patrol in. I'm getting ready to spin. As demos, we were able to see the new catalog today. So we know that um, in January, we're going to get a new mini catalog that's going to cover our um, spring holidays. So it's going to start out with actually a winter holiday. It's going to start out with Valentine's Day. And then it's going to go into Easter and Mother's Day, Father's Day, you know, all those kind of holidays. Um, and we're going to have a uh, celebration. So that will start up in January as well. If you want in on that early, you can always join my team. You don't have to have parties. You can just be a hobby demo or you can join me and actually make some money to pay for those holidays and the extra prices at the grocery store. Um, Stampin' Up! is a fabulous way to make some extra money to pay off those kind of things. And being on my team is exciting as well. You get to become creative royalty. Who would want to do that, right? So let's share my screen. Oh, and the bonus, the reason why I said you could do that is as demos, we get to order out of that new catalog December 1st. So you get it a whole month early, which is always super fun. And we get to see it today. Like I already went online before I went live and checked out the new book and made my little wish list. So um, that's fun. It's online. If you're a demo, you want to go check that out. It is the digital version is now online. Okay, let's see. Back to what I was doing. 
here is our drawing. We have 10 entries. Let's see who our winner is. Melinda, congratulations. I'm so glad your power came back on. <laughs> You are today's winner. So congratulations, Melinda. I will set your little prize aside. And hopefully I get to see you soon. Because you're local to me. You're nearby. So come back on Thursday. We are going to have another live and another class using the Peaceful Deer Bundle. Because of my huge craft fair this weekend, I don't know what we're making yet, but I promise it's going to be fun. So come back Thursday at 2.30 for another Facebook Live. And in the meantime, follow me because there's a big sale happening tomorrow. I can mention that. Tomorrow starts our seasonal sale. It's like poof, right out of my head. How could I miss that? You guys want to be sure to check out the store tomorrow because the 15th through the 18th, so Tuesday through Friday, there's some big sales happening and they're um, only available for those three days. So check out your wish list. There are going to be discounts on almost everything in the catalog. Um, there's different percentages off on different um, things like punches are 1% off, the stamp sets are another, um, but they're all on the same day. Because you, it, before we have had it where punches were on sale one day and stamps on another day and you had to put them in separate. They're not anymore. They're all on the same day. So you can all put them in one order, pay one shipping fee. Um, but check that out tomorrow. And I will have it in my newsletter. So make sure you are subscribed to that because that will show up in your mailbox tomorrow as well so that you get in on the great sales. Okay. So see you Thursday. <laughs> Bye.